What's up guys, Spin Firearms here, and today we're going to be talking about the Grip Zone. Oh wait, not today actually. We're going to be talking about something a little different. Now, before we get started, this is simply just a first impressions video as I just picked it up. And I just want to say shout out to the person who helped me at my local firearm store. It's much appreciated. Anyways, let's check it out. First thing I want to say is I like cardboard boxes. I get the plastic cases are nice. I get plastic cases on more expensive handguns, but if you give me a budget firearm, anything under $800, give it to me in a cardboard case, right? I don't care about them. They're literally stacked in bins that are going in a storage unit here shortly. So basically, don't give me, you know, something that I have to pay more for you to process and create, right? So I'm fine with the cardboard boxes and keeping it all very minimal. Let's take a look because I've already held this thing, manipulated it a little bit, and... I'm pretty dang impressed. Now, we'll touch on the firearm in a second. What do we have here? What is that? Trash. And that's it. One mag. Now, there's some benefits to that. Obviously, the starting cost is low. But at some point, you will have to go and pick up another mag. You, It's mandatory to have two mags. And I'm not 100% sure on magazine compatibility yet. That is something I have to look further into. Otherwise, that's it. That's fine with me. No cleaning brush, nothing. Keep the cost low. This is the Springfield Armory XD Mod 3. As you can see, they learned from their lesson and just put where it was made right there. No longer seeing the grip zone. They clearly learned from their lesson. And that's not the only thing they learned their lesson on. And obviously right here you have plates because this uses a similar modular optic system to the Echelon which hopefully I will be doing more reviews on here in the future. Anyways, first thing I notice is the serrations. Completely different. Sort of give it a new, you know, revamped, more modern look to it. The XDM, a lot of people don't like it. They either love the way it looks or they don't like the way it looks. For me, I like the way the XDM looks. Um, I don't have a problem with it. Obviously, we're cleared and safety checked. But some people don't like the way it looks. So this is more, you know, traditional, but a little different. And it sticks out a little bit, right? Finish wise, honestly, it's very similar to the other finishes, but it is different. It's different than your average Springfield Armory. I will say that. Um, it's a little bit more shiny, more like Glock frying pan ish. So, not necessarily a bad thing, uh, just an observation. So, not a dig at it at all. But, like I said, serrations look pretty nice. They function really well. Yep, I like them, right? Like I said, this is the four inch. You know me, though. Springfield, why didn't you make the um, subcompact? Give me a subcompact Echelon. Give me a subcompact XD Mod 3. Because if you know me, I love the Mod 2s as well as the Mod 1. The Mod 1 was one of my very first handguns. Sitting at 14k rounds, not a single problem. A lot of people don't like the XDs. I just have nothing against them. I can't just make up malfunctions or problems or issues when they've treated me extremely well. And they're affordable, especially when you're first getting into firearms, right? Now, the one thing I noticed is... Everything is like thinner. It, it just seems, I don't know if it actually is, but it seems thinner. I know the slide 100% is more low profile, giving you a lower, low, sorry, a lower bore axis, but also it won't be as heavy to help, you know, mitigate some of the recoil. So I think it's a trade-off that'll make it shoot pretty, pretty even to your average Springfield Armory XD um, Mod 1 or 2, right? So another thing I noticed the sights. They went with good sights for this. I love them. I love them. Give me a small square in the back. I like the smaller it is, the easier it is to shoot for me. There are sights there, or I mean dots right there. I don't think they're tritium. Textured, and then up front we have a fiber optic front. So obviously the rear isn't tritium. So if you want to upgrade that, but once again, these pistols are going for about 300. You can't expect much more than that. Your average clock is 5, 550, and comes with plastic cheap sights. These are actually really nice sights. I like these. I really do. Because they, they give you sort of that blacked out look. But at the same time, for the people who like the three dots, that still is there, um, depending on how your eyes catch it. Obviously, it comes with a rail. Now, ergonomics, <laughs> they're on point. Like I said, they sort of like slimline this. You know, they made the slide much thinner, shorter. The grip feels a little bit thinner. I don't know if it's just me or not, but it feels a little bit thinner. It feels a little thinner this way. Extremely ergonomic. I, that is one thing I'll give Springfield Armory. They're pretty good at making handguns feel good in the hand. Now, we're going to touch on the trigger here shortly. One thing I've noticed compared to shooting Glocks and other handguns, I tend to ride the slide stop on 
um, like my Springfield Army Hellcats and stuff like that. So I've had to adjust my grip. With this, I think I might not run into that issue. Nope, I don't think so. So actually pretty solid controls on this. And this is pretty flush while giving you a little bit of a gas pedal. Um, similar to the XDS is the, you know, and stuff like that. They have a very similar takedown lever with that little, you know, flared out piece, right? Texturing is pretty good. I don't know if it's quite the grip zone. Not 100% sure. Um, but feels pretty good. Pretty good texturing. Feels nice in the hand. Now, for $300, I would say this is a win. If you pick this up for $300, you, you really can't. 16 plus 1. I will be coming out with the size comparison video. I get three, three fingers on this full. Feels good in the hand still. Um, you know, you have complete control of this handgun. I do want the subcompact, though. Give me that and give me that, and I would be good to go. Now let's touch on that trigger. But yeah, everything functions really well in this. No mag sticking, literally nothing. It just, everything functions, right? Like I said, it does have the echelon style modular optic system, which is really, really nice to have, and towers over Glock any day of the week. Now that's racking it. Eh, pretty smooth, pretty smooth, not gonna lie. Pretty smooth. Trigger, if you noticed, they took a box out of the, I mean, they took the trigger design from the XDM, right? Right here is more a flatter face trigger, obviously a dingus, and it looks a little further back than the XDM. I could be wrong, I'll have to check, but the trigger almost looks further back, leaving you more room, but also maybe for a shorter trigger. It is very XDM-ish, maybe a little bit lighter. Eh, a little bit of a longer re uh, reset, but... In the grand scheme of things, not bad. First trigger pull. Yeah, I like it. Not a bad trigger at all. Very XDM-ish. They definitely went away from that super spongy XD trigger. I'm not saying it's the best trigger in the world, but for its category and price range, it's definitely um, a competitor because I really like the XDM trigger. And like I said, it's just a tad bit lighter. Now, like I said, these run for about 300 typically. That's pretty amazing, especially with how expensive all firearms are getting. Even some of these Tauruses are getting up in price. It's actually getting pretty crazy with the way the market is going and everything else. Now, another benefit to a handgun like this. I forgot what it was, but Springfield offered like a program back in the day, and it was for like the XDs. I think it was called the Defender Series. You guys might know in the comments, but that's what actually when I got my Mod 1. It was called the Defender Series. What it was is it basically came with a holster, basically everything you need to start carrying a handgun. A holster, it only came with one mag though, but it basically kept your cost cheaper, right? If that makes sense to you. So it allowed you to get a handgun for a relatively cheap price and just be ready to start carrying it. Obviously, you should test first, but the whole point was to, you know, arm people for a reasonable price, and I respected that. That's what this reminds, reminds me of, right? A cheaper box, no zip-up pouch, you know, no hard case, just a handgun and a mag and they'll let you do the rest. So I sort of respect stuff like that. Cheaper prices is big for me. Another thing I'd like to touch on, it's HS product made in Croatia. We know this already, but that doesn't matter. Croatia is one of the most beautiful places. And if you look up the things Croatia has invented and engineered, it'll blow your mind. Someone actually came on here and listed an item because they are Croat or made a list of items because they are Croatian. The list was unbelievable. The stuff they invented is crazy. So when people talk down to Croatia, it's one of the nicer area, you know, places in that area. So I don't know why people talk down on it. Just remember, your SIG P320s were sold for $230 a piece to the military. They're selling them to you for $500, right? This is made there, probably $150. Bucks. They're selling them to us for $300. So can you really, and that's just to the company, right? From the company. How cheap is your SIG P320 at the end of the day, right? They're making a killing off of you guys. Not me, though. I got rid of my P3, P320 a long, long time ago. Nothing against them. I just, I can't get on board with them, right? But this right here, it's a competitor. <laughs> I mean, it's a competitor. Obviously, it's got to be reliable, accurate. It's got to shoot well. But this thing right here is 100% a competitor. And I like it so far. I really do like it so far. I would like to see it subcompact. I know that's a long shot with the way the market's going. Um, but yeah, I like to see stuff like this because they released the Echelon which became more of their duty style handgun um, and are doing stuff with that. And that's more up there in price, but it's still nice to have these options a little bit cheaper um, that can still compete with some of these budget options and still run reliably. 
Another thing is, if you're learning to carry, these are great handguns. I know a lot of people don't like grip safeties, but I've never had a grip safety fail me once in my life, and I own many Springfields. This is a great way to get comfortable with carrying with a round in the chamber. If you carry appendix and have a firearm aimed at your junk as a man all day, every day, it can be nerve-wracking when you first start off. So I like to think of the people that are beginners as well. Not everyone is a pro right away, right? So that is a good way to keep around in the chamber and make sure that, you know, it's going to take this and this to send that trigger off. Obviously, that, that, that was ridiculous to do that, right? So without that, nothing. And obviously, if you're just pressing that, nothing's going to happen. But when they're both compressed, it goes bang. Honestly, a pretty solid option, a pretty solid pickup. I'm actually pretty excited to take this out to the range. So... I enjoy it, you know, striker indicator, loaded chamber indicator, it's pretty dang solid. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Not the greatest handgun in the world, but for $300, I honestly think this is a huge, you know, breakthrough for Springfield. I think it's solid. You know, this, this is pretty solid, especially for people who do want a duty handgun. Optics ready, very modular system, you know, good capacity, 16 plus one for 17 rounds. Um, I'll keep you guys up to date on the magazine situation. I think it's a win. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.